Well, good. Uh, I think we're still saying good morning. It's 1145. Uh, good morning. I'm Zach Klein, uh, the president of Columbus City Council. I appreciate everyone coming here. I'd like to, to introduce people standing up here. I see uh, Deputy Director Kate Bishotti, Assistant Fire Chief uh, uh, James Davis, Medical Director here David Kessig, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Ken Keebler, and Deputy uh, Chief Richard Bash. Uh, look, we're here because we have a serious problem in our community uh, that was exacerbated over the weekend. Uh, and I wanted to let, uh, what, let the community know what we're doing as a city, the Department of Health, the Department of Public Safety, uh, to proactively address uh, the opiate heroin problem in our community. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Long to uh, provide some remarks. Good morning, and thank you, Council President um, Klein. Actually, we are all here because we're all about saving lives in Columbus. So what our community experienced this weekend is exactly what many of us had feared. Heroin addiction is a chronic, relapsing brain disease that can cause devastation in a community that's already vulnerable. This weekend, there was a significant increase in the number of heroin and opiate-related overdoses. This is a public health epidemic that is increasing in our community, and indeed, it can happen again. As your health commissioner, I am urging anyone, anyone with a loved one addicted to heroin, or if you are addicted to heroin, to follow some key steps. Secure or purchase naloxone, a drug commonly known as Narcan. Naloxone reverses the effects of an overdose and, avail and it is available at pharmacies and many outlets throughout Central Ohio without a prescription. Again, naloxone, Narcan, is available in Columbus. When you use an opiate or heroin, have someone else present. When you use with someone else present, take turns so someone is conscious to help out if you overdose. Again, we are very concerned about heroin and opiate use and how it has increased the numbers of overdoses that have increased over the last five years and seem to be increasing um, as we look at the numbers year to year. So again, we urge everyone to both seek treatment for their addiction, but the most important thing about saving lives, which again, we are all committed to, from a health perspective is to be sure that you have the ability to provide Narcan or Naloxone until there's someone else who can provide assistance. Again, get Naloxone, get Narcan, it's available. Thank you, Dr. Long. Uh, and I, I failed to mention my partner in crime on uh, council is our safety chair, uh, director, council member, Mitch Brown. I still call him director. He's my director. He's a, a great man and uh, has been the forefront of fighting uh, some of these issues in our community and across the state of Ohio. Look, we have a real problem in our community. Uh, and we have to be honest and pragmatic about how we're going to address it. Uh, it's going to take progressive and aggressive solutions to do it. And as Dr. Long indicated, uh, Narcan is the first step, which is why I have worked with uh, the Department of Public Safety uh, in making sure that both our police and fire personnel are carrying Narcan uh, for drug uh, addiction, uh, rehabilitation, and saving lives. Um, five to six runs a day. Uh, that's how many runs our Division of Fire are doing in the city of Columbus per day. And now with uh, our Division of Police uh, carrying Narcan, uh, they're doing, I think, in the, what, the four weeks that we've been doing the, the pilot, they've done uh, double-digit administration. Our Division of Fire is fast, but sometimes our police department gets there quicker. Uh, and if you can beat there uh, first, every second counts. Uh, in the administration of Narcan to save a life. So when you start thinking about the underlying numbers here, like five to six people are dying in the city of Columbus per day and are being brought back to life essentially uh, through Narcan administration, which is why it's so important uh, to use Narcan, to have it available if you are uh, using heroin. Uh, this is, we have to have an honest community conversation about this because it's real in our community, it's pervasive across the state of Ohio. Uh, but I'm going to challenge the Department of Public Health here, as well as nonprofit providers, because it's not enough just to administer the Narcan. We have to have follow-up services for people that are addicts and have drug problems so that we can get them the treatment they need. We give them the second chance, third chance of life 
because they're drug users, but we have to point them in the right direction and give them the help that they need. Uh, that's why on the treatment side uh, at City Council, uh, I'm going to be partnering with a great community uh, group called Alvis uh, to do a new rehabilitation center in Livingston Avenue. They're uh, rehabil rehabilitating a doctor's office and I'm gonna be helping with uh, $250,000 of capital funds to help them redo that facility so that there's more treatment available uh, for those that need it. So I appreciate uh, everyone being here. You know, Remember that these are our neighbors, these are our friends, these could be our sons or daughters, the people we go to church with, uh, that this is, this is real. Uh, and it takes a community response to deal with this. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm personally touched uh, every time that I go down to see Judge Herbert in the catch court uh, because this also directly affects the victims of human trafficking. Uh, that's modern day slavery. Uh, and the pimps and the human traffickers that are no longer using chains, they're using heroin as the addiction that are driving these women to perform acts and these really terrible human traffickers are using this drug as a way to hold it over their head for them to perform and do things so that these people, these bad, bad people that deserve to go to jail for a very long time, the human traffickers, uh, can make money. Uh, so we're all in this together. And I know with a community response, we can have community solutions. Uh, so I thank everyone for being here. And from this point forward, I think we can do one-on-ones. Questions? Are we going to do one on ones or answer questions? Whatever you'd like. You guys want to do questions? Is... Yeah. Okay. tackle it from the health perspective. I think this is just being pragmatic and realistic. We can certainly turn a blind eye and pretend that it doesn't exist and say, well, we don't want to do this because we're enabling. The reality is people have easy access to it. It's cheap. They're using it. So we have to be progressive, realistic, and pragmatic to save people's lives and to tackle addiction. This is the first step. And Dr. Long, do you want to add anything? So we view the use of naloxone as saving a life. We view much of this as saving a life as an opportunity, and we know that the um, evidence is there that once a life is saved, once there are opportunities made available, there is an increased likelihood of entry into successful treatment. So again, we've been about multiple different programs all of this is about moving people along a path to recovery. And as I stated, addiction is a chronic relapsing brain disease. So every opportunity that we have to save the life allows people to move along as if they had another chronic disease, be it diabetes or asthma, et cetera. No one would ever say we should not save the life um, of someone who had a different chronic disease. So again, this is all about saving the life and moving people towards treatment and recovery. People, I think, that OD um, from this one um, kind of heroin and then two deaths, and there's a possibility that there's fentanyl involved in that. Do you know whether this um, Narcan has any effect if uh, th that kind of uh, drug is being used? So fentanyl, there may be many other possibilities of what what is involved, either with heroin mixed or by itself. What Narcan or naloxone does is it actually reverses at the opiate receptor. So in fact, yes, indeed, both for fentanyl, for maybe others, as well as clearly for opiates, other synthetic opiates, naloxone can be effective. And this has kind of blossomed here in Columbus lately, or at least we're hearing more about it, where counties like uh, Marion and Ross and Licking, they've been battling this, especially the southern counties, for years. Is this, is the heroin addiction becoming worse here or is it just becoming more noticeable? So, a very good question. We know that actually Ohio itself has been um, a a focus for all of the drug use and the beginning and then moving forward of, of 
large-scale community drug using awareness um, for the nation. And in fact, we have watched both what's happened down in the southern um, river area of Ohio. It has definitely moved north. But there is no doubt that there has been drug use and concern about heroin use right here in Columbus and Central Ohio for some time. This and what happened both this weekend is something that we have been concerned about, both my colleagues and police and fire, but certainly public health, that this could happen um, here in Columbus. And, and actually, thankfully, we have still yet to see what's occurred in Marion or Dayton, et cetera. But we want to stop it. That's what this is about. <laughs> yeah, he's been the driving force behind it. Using this, the trial, this is not brand new. It's something you've been doing for a month. Talk about how that's been going, what you've used, and whether there's any push to, to add additional officers. So we're about a month into uh, the, the full deployment of the trial program. Uh, the training occurred around May 20th, 23rd, somewhere, somewhere in there. Fully trained up all our folks on 13 and 19 precincts, the two epicenters, if you will, of the, of, the, of the challenge here in Columbus. They're all trained up by the middle of June, so we've been fully active for about three to four weeks. Uh, as of this morning, we've deployed 12 doses. Uh, one officer has deployed three times. The other nine have been nine individual officers. So, um, so about two per week uh, that, we're, that we're doing, that, that's kind of the number we pretty much expected, two to three per week, and that's where we're hitting right now. So, it is working. So in each of those cases, the, the people to whom we gave uh, Narcan, some of, them, some, of them, some of them have had subsequent doses by fire once fire got there, but all 12 of those have survived. Um, and there was, there, was, there was one administration during this issue uh, two nights ago on, on, on the east side. What are your officers telling you about how they feel about doing it? Is that something they're feeling positive about or they're so, challenging you in a sense? So it's a brand new program, and so some of them had questions about it, had concerns about um, the enabling issue that you discussed. But what we're hearing from officers who have issued it is that uh, it was, for some of them, life-changing to be able to watch somebody that they saw dying in front of them and reverse that overdose and, and help that person come back to life, uh, or not come back to life, but you know, uh, carry on and, and, and reverse the overdose. It's powerful to save somebody's life, and the officers who have had that opportunity uh, really see themselves as having given back to the community in, in, in exactly the way that they wanted to when, when, they, when they took the job. So we all said we wanted to change lives, save lives, when we took the job and make, make the world a better place. This is an opportunity for them to do that. If I just want back to the enabling question, I think it's uh, important to also, when you start characterizing, like these, these people, like as Dr. Long said, they have addiction issues. They need help to treat the underlying addiction issue. Uh, and Narcan and the administration of Narcan can save their lives and hopefully we can get them in the right, headed in the right direction uh, to be able to capitalize on rehabilitative services. And then you start thinking about victims of human trafficking um, that are addicted to drugs because their, their pimps and the human traffickers administer the drugs to them. Um, I wanna make sure that they get a second chance we shouldn't let them just roam the streets, uh, turn tricks so their human traffickers can make money. They may have an overdose. They need help. And by having Narcan available and by promoting the availability of Narcan, we may be able to give them a second chance. There's also an example of uh, rescue personnel coming to save a 34-day-old baby's life, a month old because the mom was using heroin and it passed through the breast milk into the baby. Accidental overdose for the 34 day old, but because this is available in the public, we were able to save a one month old baby's life. I'm sorry? Yes, it was very close. It was just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then also Narcan's available at our research or our testing facility in case there's an overdose, uh, an accidental pass through of the drug for the, for the technicians that are testing the drug. Uh, because this is this is highly potent stuff um, so this is something that's a community problem that we are going to be realistic about and we're going to be very aggressive about so that we can save lives make a difference in our community and hopefully point people in the right direction to get rehabilitative service i have a, i have a daughter that's four and a son that's two and this this worries me it worries me for every kid that no one grows up to think they want to be uh, addicted to drugs but you know life circumstances happen 
we need to be here as a community to make a difference. And that's what we're doing. Recently, uh, Dublin schools decided that they were going to carry naloxone at their schools. Has there been any discussion here in Columbus whether Columbus City Schools would also have that available in the school? Uh, it's my hope uh, that we will have a strong partnership with uh, Columbus Public Schools. Uh, again, being realistic about this problem. It's the problem that sees no race, it sees no class, it sees no sex, uh, it sees no sexual orientation. If you're addicted and you have this issue, uh, it will get you. Uh, and so we need to make sure that all hands are on deck. So with that, just to back to the schools, are you going to talk with them or any of this group? Is there a We should look for every community partner that's willing to, part to uh, join forces with us. And I think, I think Columbus Public Schools would be a, a great community partner in this endeavor. On the um, situation that you talked about, uh, the, the development on Livingston, I, I, it's through Alice. Alice, yeah. How does it talk about the timetable for that? And it, I know it's a proposal right now. Quarter million dollars to go to that. And again, in a nutshell, what would you like to see happen? Well, it's going to be a for outpatient uh, help for those that are addicted to drugs, for family counseling, mental health. Uh, treatment, drug addiction treatment. Uh, again, this is being on the forefront and the city being aggressive and progressive uh, in tackling this issue. So we have to go with the best. Alvis is a great community partner that uh, deals with this issue day in and day out. Uh, and in talking to their leader, uh, I saw a partnership here of being able for the city and Alvis to come together and open up this facility on uh, the east side on Livingston. And we want to do our part to make sure that happens. Yeah, thank, you. thank you all for coming out. We're going to have to um, cut this right about now because we have some time, time, time location. So if you have any we'll, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.